explain the world is happening on Wall Street. Economic indicators. Who knows where this is going to end up? To understand the economy, you have to understand human nature. Welcome to the podcast. The nature of this podcast, the purpose of this podcast, is to make economics as accessible and as interesting and take the complication out of economics as possible. I've always believed that economics is far too important to be left to economists, actually. And because economics, when you really strip it down, is the business of your everyday life, it is important for all of us. So that's the objective every week. Now, this week, we're going to be talking about something that has interested me, which is commercial property in Ireland and what's going to happen. And ultimately, given so much money has been ploughed into commercial property, will we repeat the mistakes of the past and have a crash, not in residential property as we had the last time, but in commercial property? That's the point of this week's podcast. Every week, I'm going to be joined by an old, old friend of mine to tease out the ideas, a guy called John Davis, who I've known, believe it or not, for 50 odd years. John, how are you ahead? Very good. How are you? I'm in good form. I'm how flying. was your week? My week was, it was grand, except for the fact that I actually went to the dentist and at our vintage, John, we're getting teeth pulled out, which yeah. is kind of shocking. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> part of the uh, awful aging process. But I went uh, with a gammy gum and your man discussed at a distance the notion of oral hygiene, which I thought was unpleasant oh, no. in itself. And he said, basically, we're going to yank out your wisdom tooth. So my week hasn't been fantastic. Right. I'm scared of the dentist. I, I just, shit scared. I'm shit yeah. scared. And the worst thing about getting a tooth pulled, and it's going to have to be on Thursday, it's like old school. It's like medieval. It hasn't changed. The pliers. They just yank it out. Like it's just to put her pliers around the thing and out you go. So I said to him, what's the story? He said, oh, you'll feel fine after a while. But he said, you will look as if you've gone a few rounds in the octagon with McGregor. <laughs> so I intend looking pretty swanky this weekend. <laughs> but before we get into this, I also want to talk about who is also in the room. It's going to help us with this week's edition and hopefully other editions, if I can drag him back from England, just in the door from London, is Finn Midlachlan. Finn Midlachlan has been working with me for the last five, maybe six years since his father emailed me. I'd worked, done a bit of work with his dad his dad emailed me about six years ago, said, I've got a young fellow who wants to do economics and he needs a steer uh, or he needs a start. It was like old, old school Irish thing. It was like, it was like turn up in Cricklewood with, <laughs> with, with yourself, give us a start. So I gave Finn a start and he's gone on to great, great things, which is amazing. Just fantastic. Finn, how are you, man? Yeah, not too bad. But a few quotation marks around great, great things, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> all good. Tell me, how is it over there? In London, how are the Brits? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Are they all upset about Brexit? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I had my flight booked for the 12th, you know, hoping, hoping the whole thing would go ahead and they wouldn't let me back in, but <laughs> they've delayed it again. They've so. delayed it. Well, listen, so myself and John are going to be nattering as two old mates. Finn is going to draw us back and say, what does that mean? What's the story He's here? He's going to correct us. He's going to correct us, exactly. <laughs> Gently. Exactly. Gently. So listen, let's kick on. Before we begin, I want to just mention that this episode is brought to you thanks to our Patreon supporters. And to help support the content, and perhaps more importantly, to unlock exclusive comment and scenes and footage and episodes, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash David McWilliams. So, Mark, in all your dentistry and all the rest, yeah. what were you writing about this week? Well, I tell you what I was writing about, John. I went to Belfast last Wednesday to give a talk. Kind of interesting when you're giving a talk on Brexit to the Belfast business community, who are to a man, I suspect, unionists. Right. And so it's a it's a little chastening when you go in initially and you're trying to befriend them all. But as you know, my missus is from Belfast, so I know the tribe. But when you get the train out of Connolly to Belfast, very quickly the city opens up in front of you or behind you because I'm one of these odd weirdos who likes to sit on the seat which is the opposite direction to the way the train is going, which is unusual because most people... could say an awful lot about you, Mac. Say, it sure probably what, does. Though. Well, if there are any uh, psychoanalysts <laughs> or, or uh, bloodthirsty killers <laughs> listening, you might actually tell me what the hell it's all about. But anyway, what it does allow you to see what's going on behind you. And what you see in Dublin is this extraordinary concentration of cranes in a very, 
very small area, north inner city, south inner city, more or less around the docks. And those sort of things worry me. So the article was sparked by that vision. And the article is about commercial property, as in, you know, commercial property, yeah. place offices for rent. And are we in a commercial property bubble? If we are, will that burst? If it bursts, what does that mean? Is it going to be like the last time? Is it going to be different? So that's what the article is all about. And of course, everybody in Ireland, this is the important thing, everybody in Ireland from the government, the estate agents, from the banks are all telling you, don't worry, it'll be all grand. Yeah, you see, I've been listening to them and going, I, I know nothing about the commercial property market, but I, I found the, the article really interesting. But I was a bit confused by a few things, such as things like, I see lots of cranes too. <laughs> I, see, I see lots of cranes and cranes mean there's lots of investment, there's lots of work going on, lots of employment, lots of tax revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So I would have thought it was a good thing, but you're saying that you're worried about it. So should I be worried? And then the other thing is like, like I don't own or I'm not invested in any commercial property, but I do have my house and I know what happened the last time and we all got stung. So if there is a commercial property crash, how will that be different? How, what will that look like? And will that affect me in any sort of way? Well, these are two uh, really, really interesting takes. And one is the idea that you see cranes and see one thing, and I see cranes and see another thing. Yeah. And then that's the first question. We'll, we, we all we'll see talk. cranes now. We all just see to, cranes, just to exactly. Clarify, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, listener, just so you know, that Finn actually researches these articles. He does all the hard work. He crunches all the numbers, comes well, up with all the data. We're a heavily data-driven organization here now with the with <laughs> Williams Inc. So. Mac Williams Inc. Start attack, Finn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but John, I do want to make a point and it's very important and it'll hold for the entire podcast is that I believe the key to understanding economics is understanding the idea that economics is counterintuitive. What seems to be right is regularly wrong what seems to be wrong is regularly right. And if intuitively you think, oh, you know, cranes is good, it's employment, it's investment, stuff is going up. The economist says, yeah, that's all good. However, I see something else. I see overinvestment. I see yeah. too many cranes. I see too much money in the wrong place. And I see beyond that corner, what happens if that all wobbles? Who picks up the tab? Last time we picked up the tab. Yeah, well, this I mean, time that's what we all worried be- about. Precisely. And I think most people listening to the podcast are worried. It's like, I don't own a Google building, so what do I care? Yeah. Google goes up yeah. and down. However, your point is right. And what it comes down to, and we're going to get onto it, is the fact that in Ireland, the buyer of last resort, i.e. the last sucker who buys the glittering project, tends to be the Irish pension fund, which everybody listening to, or lots of people listening to, will have a stake in your pension fund. So what will happen is that pension fund will come and say, oh, we've got this great product and this product is commercial property and it's got no risk. And basically what it's doing is that they raise the money from you, the pension fund owners go to whoever owns that building and says, we'll buy it off you. And suddenly now the speculator who got in early is out and has made his money and the risk is given to the average Joe. And then if it crashes, you know what's going to happen? The people will say, oh, the value of your pension could go up or down. Yeah. And yeah. previous performance is no guarantee of future performance and your pension suffers. So let's keep those in mind yeah. and let's get into... Yeah, I, I, the there's, a, there's a few things I want to ask you about. For a start, you, you mentioned something called a shadow bank. A shock is a shadow <laughs> bank. What is it? Who are they? You don't want to hang out. You don't want to go drink with the shadow bank. Okay. You don't want to... Okay. I'll talk. Well, let, let me, before I get to that, let me put a frame on the art. So I see all these cranes. I look at it and I think, hold on a second. Is there too much money going into the same place, maybe the wrong place at the same time? Then I think, okay, maybe there is. Then I think, okay, if there's so much money, where is it coming from? Because money has to come from somewhere. Yep. And the interesting thing is when prices rise, it means that lots of money is going into that area. So in the past in Ireland, when money went into commercial property or residential property, it came from the Irish banks. This time it's not coming from the Irish banks. It's coming from a different creature, a creature that has really emerged since 2008 in Ireland called the shadow bank. And a shadow bank is 
what it is. It's like a shadow, not the real thing. It looks, it feels like a human, but it ain't yeah. one. And a shadow bank looks and feels and smells like a bank, but it isn't one. So what is it? It is largely what is called a private equity outfit. But I'll tell you what these are. So since 2008, interest rates fell, 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 down to zero. So if you are a rich person or any person, but particularly a wealthy person, and you're thinking, I'll put my money in the bank, but it's only earning 0%, and I would like more interest from my deposit. But the bank can't offer that because interest rates are very low. Then some dude arrives and says, you know what? You give me your money, yeah. particularly if you're a rich person, and I will give you 5 or 6% return. So they're a regular investment fund. They're a regular investment fund. But the difference is when they take in money from investors, rich people, yeah. we don't look at that as a deposit in the same way as if your ma put her money in Bank of Ireland. Yeah. That's a deposit. Your communion but, money. In like the, your communion, exactly. You go, but it's this, it. it's this, well, I still have it, obviously. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously. But these shadow banks take money from very wealthy people and very wealthy organizations and promise them lots and lots of return. So what they've got to do is once they take the money in, they've got to scour the globe looking for that return. Yeah. That's how they arrived here in Ireland. So they arrived. What's the name of one or two of them? Well, there are. Would, there would are. we know them? No, they? no. They've got really, okay. they've really good names. Right. Like the they're, faceless men for you Game of Thrones fans tonight. Yes. Now, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I see millennials Game of Thrones. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. over my head. Do you watch totally. that? No, I couldn't get into it. I've I never tried seen to get it. into it, and I just went. Oh, our gosh. lads. <laughs> what a, come on! What sort of okay? What's the big? Why do you lot get the horn for this Game of Thrones thing? It's not, it's not just us lot now, sorry. It's the biggest television series history, period. Like. But when you're going to be out drinking and riding and having a laugh, you're watching telly. You know, what's going on? Generational, generational change. Yeah. We're, we've missed something. We've Mark. missed something. Oh, do you no. know what it is? I can't put my finger on it. Listen, let's get back to the Game of Thrones, but to take to, like, the, to the, the, the shadow banks, right? So the shadow banks have, as I said, great names. They're usually enhanced or something or other because right. enhanced is kind of good yeah it's better than non-enhanced but they're usually growth fund because growth is good it's better yeah, than growth no growth good, right? yeah. yeah big high increase but and they usually have names you'll notice after uh greek gods like zeus magellan they're always good on a they're going to discover the columbus fund or whatever right right yeah <laughs> okay but the point is they take people's money and they look for what they call yield for the return this is how they arrived in ireland they are the people who bought up and are still buying up most of Dublin's commercial property. So what they do is they give money to a developer, usually an old school Celtic Tiger developer. He pretends that he is fronting the development, which is why you hear, you know, Johnny Ronan or something's big development. He doesn't have any money, right? Yeah. He's fronting yeah. from somebody else, okay? The people he's fronting for basically say, build us that thing. And then what we will do is we will go to one of the great Dublin estate agents, such as they are, yeah. and they will find us a good client. So let's say that client is eBay or Google. Yeah. So that's a very good, what they call covenant, right? It's a good thing to have. And basically what happens is the international money comes in, it buys the Irish property. The Irish property's valuation is validated by the amount of rent they can get. They get the rent from what's called a triple A customer, like a Google or something like that, and they're away. And what basically happens is that pushes up the price of the development because the rent is very, very high. And now what you see is rent in Dublin in those new developments is just shy of 700 euros a square meter. That makes Jesus. Dublin, yeah. Yeah. after London and Paris, the most expensive city in Europe. Wow. Just to give you the figure on that. So since 2015, that's up 22%. And since 2015, yeah. Yeah. So where's somewhere like, like a Barcelona, a great city like that? Sure. So Barcelona is up 18% since 2015. We'll compare that to Paris, 12%. And what's the actual figure? Like if you go into Barcelona. Sure. So prime office rent, uh, euro per square meter in Barcelona is 270 euro. And it's 700 in Ireland. It's 673, according to the latest figures I have here. Wow. Okay. So the shadow banks are things that look and smell like banks, but they aren't banks. Yeah. And the question that we have is that, A, how will they behave in the context of a crash? B, who's going to get burned? And C, how does all this suggest that there's a bubble? 
Now, the reason I think that there's a bubble is because every market, whether it's the market for tulips or the residential market last time around in Ireland or the market for second apartments or whatever, once it begins to take off, once prices begin to rise, it becomes more an exercise in group psychology than in economics. And by that, I mean the really interesting thing about humans is we're incredibly social animals. Yeah. And we're unbelievably suggestible, right? We're a bit like sort of talkative chimps. That's the way I look at us, right? That we're actually like chimpanzees. We all talk and talk and talk together, right? And what happens in a market is that it becomes when lots and lots of people start to make money, the major drug in the market is higher prices. That's the drug that attracts everybody in. Prices keep going up. And then it becomes a bit like a group trip that everybody's dropped together and everybody comes up at the same time and nobody can really wreck the buzz. So it's the same for professional investors or for Joe Public, right? And what has happened in Ireland, I think, is that we're back to where we were in about 2006, 2005 in the residential, that everyone says you can't lose in this market. So prices go up and up, and as prices go up and up, it attracts and coax more and more people into right. this market. God forbid you don't get on the ladder. God, all that stuff. Mm. Like getting on the ladder is exactly what we talk about in Ireland for average people, but don't think the average person is different to these guys. That's the interesting sure. thing. Right. The insight that I got from working in financial markets years ago is that they're the same as everyone else. Wait, and can, so, so these guys are, they're mostly foreign investors. With Irish agents. With Irish agents, yeah. yeah. But they're, but it is foreign money. The money is mainly American. Okay, at, okay. In the, in the first phase, yeah. right? And the reason it's mainly American is that America is where most of the capital is. And then that American money goes looking for a home and they find a home in Ireland. And then what they do very cleverly is they employ a few paddies in significant positions, yeah. usually mm -hmm. former estate agents, actually, from the last crash. Yeah. And then they front the thing. So it looks and feels like an Irish company. Okay. But it's not. So, but, but is it regulated and oh, controlled totally, by, by, totally by regulated. the central bank and yeah, all that? But rest. I mean, the, the thing about the regulation is that we know from our history that regulation and being regulated is no bulletproof guarantee that things won't go wrong. Yeah. Okay, so they're all regulated. No, this is all regulated. The interesting thing is regulated markets are not necessarily markets that are safe. That's the most important thing. Mm. That all well, we these found that out, didn't precisely, we? These, all, these, all these markets display the same type of characteristics that investors go from euphoria to pessimism. So euphoria to giddiness to pessimism very, very quickly. And when you get so much money concentrated in a small market, for me... It's a worrying thing. And again, it's it's more to do with group psychology. Yeah, so, I love the psychology thing. Give us a bit more on well, that. Well, if you think that what actually happens is when prices start to rise, humans start to talk. And when humans start to talk, the story always is, whether it's a big or small crowd, oh, you know your man, he bought that for a tenner, he sold it for a hundred quid. Yeah. I want some of that, okay? The cardinal rule of investment over years is always, it should be, to buy something when its price is low and sell it when its price is high. But actually what happens, most humans do the opposite. We buy when the price is high because we get giddy and then we panic and we sell when it's low and yeah. that's how we go bust. That's why we all went bust the last time around. So the essence of investment is that humans are contrarian. Okay, but in actual fact, most humans are what's called momentum investors. They go with the flow. Yeah, and we're seeing exactly that in the Irish. Well, it's the fear of, of of missing out. Yeah, FOMO. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like we had the Grand National there a few weeks ago. How did you get on? I, well, I, I, you know, everyone is going. Oh, I got a bet in this one. I've got a tenner on this. I've got a fiver on that. I know nothing about horses. Well, the but I out. was there. Yeah. I was at the bookie's window going, tenor on that, <laughs> tenor on the nose. You are the you man know, the bookie had... wants to see. <laughs> yeah. As absolutely. if we're not betting on the funny names. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's try and make sense of it all. You have evidence of massive investments stroke speculation in a very narrow market mm. called the Dublin commercial property market. This is evidenced by the Irish Times Crane Index 
But today we got another piece of information which I think should make us all a little bit more worried, which is a REIT, a thing called Hibernian REIT. Now, a REIT sounds like jargon. What it is, it's a fund that invests exclusively in property. So these people are the experts. And this morning, they announced that they were getting out. So when the biggest player is getting out, it's telling you something that they know something or they fear something that the rest doesn't fear. Yeah. And of course, this is the thing that really angers me. Who are they going to sell to to get out? They're going to sell to Irish pension funds. So your doctors, your cops, your, 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 your nurses, your, all these people who work in the public sector, all these people who work in the private sector, pay over their money to pension funds, okay, are now possibly at risk of this crash. And you know what's going to happen? Nothing. Because if there is a crash, they'll say, oh, well, you know, we told you it could have gone up. We told you it could have gone down. So that, that makes me cross. And the reason that I feel we should worry is because of this greed and fear pendulum, which dictates markets. And then finally, final point is why this, we should worry is because if you look at the international economy, Okay, the international economy has been on a 10-year upswing. It's now very clear the United States is probably coming to towards the end of that mm. upswing. What happens is this money is American-based. What happens when the American economy turns down and goes into recession is all sorts of companies go bust. Not so much they go bust, but they need capital. Yeah, There's a big capital call from America. That means a massive sucking sound all around the world as American capital goes home. Yeah. to fix its own balance sheet. And where are they going to sell? They're going to sell in the most exposed regions like Dublin. But who are they going to sell it to? But who this the hell is, is my point. Buy it? This <laughs> is my point. At the moment, they are gradually laying off risk all the time to Irish right. property. So in conclusion, an Irish property crash 10 years ago, that happened because Irish investors were heavily leveraged on Irish property, financed by Irish banks, could well happen now where Irish investors, as in pension funds, yep. are heavily leveraged in Irish pension funds, having bought out the original speculators who are now back safely in the United States. Right. Jesus, Mary. So let, so let me ask you then, Mac, you know, down the road is BlackRock and there's a lot of building going on in BlackRock. And the one thing that really confuses me about a lot of the building that's going on is BlackRock is building a new shopping centre of all things. And this is at a time where you can't ignore the fact that the increase in online shopping is enormous, particularly over the last, and it's growing exponentially. Why are people buying shopping centres or building shopping centres of all things? Well, well, that's a very good point. And and obviously this comes from the fact that, uh, again, listener, uh, John uh, drinks in a very weird boozer down in BlackRock. (laughs) But anyway... Let's call it BlackRock. Two things are interesting about this. One is that being pimped around the town in Dublin at the moment is a product which is, again, a pension product saying, come and invest in the BlackRock shopping centre. Prime real estate, yada, Mm. yada, yada, yada. Again, what we're looking at is risk being laid off from the original developer to the Irish punter. It's all a process of laying off risk. And the person who wins is the person who lays off the risk at the right time. The second point, I think, is the more general point, which is should in a normal functioning economy, high street shopping, shopping centres, be a premium product when people are shopping online in greater numbers? Absolutely. My own sense is no, they shouldn't be. But, and this is the nub of the issue, There is so much totemic obsession with land in this fucking country that what you have is something that doesn't make sense from your, the back of the pub, common sense, slightly stoned common sense, but common sense, another view, is morphed into a must-have pension product by regulation, by manipulation, and by the fact that there are agents selling this stuff all the time. That, as you know, is what really has pissed me off for years here. Yeah, yeah. What you have is basic common sense economics that people feel in their gut is 
blackguarded by a system that enriches the very few. Well, it is kind of driven as well, I suppose, by the fact that economics is one of those things that we all have a loose grasp of. And as yeah. you say, it's as you started off saying that it, was, it is counterintuitive. So maybe a lot of us don't get that. And so therefore we're, we're laid open to the advice of brokers, et cetera, telling us there's a good deal, there's a good investment. So you kind of go, well, I'm not really sure what I'm talking about. They seem to know what they're talking about. I'll go with them. Well, well, I think you've captured two things. One is the essence of why I think doing a podcast is a good idea on economics, is that hopefully if people listen, they'll think, oh, do you know what? Maybe it's not like this. Maybe mm. these people are wrong. And maybe there's another way of looking at it. Second thing is I've always felt that economics now in the early 21st century looks and feels like the medieval church, that the economists, so you know the medieval church, they used to speak Latin to the yeah, punters, so right? Because of Charlemagne. Char you are made Charlemagne. Under the, don't you start and you're bleeding Charlemagne. They come back to the world. But you know what I mean? So the priest would say to the punters, look, the mass is going to be in Latin. You don't have to learn Latin. Because I learn Latin and I can understand Latin and I have a direct line to God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to speak to God. And all you got to do is put a few coppers in the plate at the end of the week. All will be kosher. Well, maybe not kosher, wrong religion, but all will be, all be fine. Right? <laughs> Economists sometimes, it feels to me, play the role of the medieval priest. And they say to the punters, and I'm on TV with them every now and then and on radio, and they say, don't worry, we understand everything. Trust us. Everything will be hunky-dory. Yeah. Problem is, last time the average punter trusted the soft landing brigade, what happened? The opposite of what the soft mm. landing brigade said. So my sense is that your, your question is very valid. And hopefully... Oh, thanks oh. very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, we need another Lutheran. That's what we need. We, need, we, need, we do, actually. Like, like, no, sorry. Finn, no, no, just saying a, cr a crash course in economic literacy isn't the worst thing in the world. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> not. It is not, it is not. And, and hopefully the podcast will uh, go some way. Yeah. Well, come here, look, th to wrap this up and to, to kind of make sense of it all, is there a silver lining in all of this? Well, there is a silver lining, which is the idea that cheap is good. Cheap land is good. So, for example, if Dublin, Finn gave you the figures a little while ago, mm -hmm. if Dublin was, rents were to go from 670 odd per square metre to Barcelona rents, which I think you said were 250 odd or 350 odd, that's a great thing. That means that the cost of doing business here falls. It means the availability of rent increases. It means you can invest in other things like human capital and ideas and yep. technology yep. and all this stuff. So in my book, cheap land is a great thing. But there's a huge vested interest in Ireland to tell us that expensive land is a great thing and there's no economic textbook that I know of, ever written anywhere, that says expensive land is a good thing for a normal economy. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Now, if you like our content and you want to support us, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash David McWilliams. If you become a patron, you can unlock all sorts of interesting new content, interviews I'm going to be doing, ticket giveaways for those interviews, those conversations with really interesting people, experiences that you can't get anywhere else. And this will ensure that the podcast remains ad-free and you can get all of this stuff for the price of a pint. Mm -hmm.